surprising. Do you know, it is really easy in this sunshine to forget there are some dirty great clouds on the horizon. Predictions of 3 million unemployed by the end of the year. News of 9 billion borrowed in the month of February alone. That is a record. My advice to you, just enjoy this sunshine while you can. Good advice there from Anita and our thanks to the beautiful Sime Park in Brentford. Amazing to think it's only a couple of miles from us here in the centre of London. Michael, these are shocking unemployment figures. Uh, if we're brutally honest, blunt, it's heading for three million, isn't it? Uh, yes, and possibly even uh, beyond. The political effect, though, is uh, not entirely straightforward. I mean, the Conservatives won elections with three million unemployed. Mm. So... It isn't absolutely a death knell for a government, but obviously it's, it's a very serious position, as well as being very dreadful for the people involved. Gordon Brown says he feels the pain of all these people being made unemployed. Does that work? I think the political effects of the levels of unemployment actually depends on who's unemployed and where they are. And I think in London and the South East, we're going to be very hard by unemployment because of the importance. Which is where a lot of marginal Labour seats are, that's with the my, Tory second. That's mm. my point. So you may have won an election with mm -hmm. three million, but they weren't necessarily your voters. Yeah. A lot of the north of England and central Scotland and where the Welsh Valleys. But so. this is going to be different. Were you convinced by Lord Miner's uh, explanation of his role in Fred the Shred's pension? I think, you know, poor Lord Miners, uh, he, comes to the, he comes to the House of Commons Committee and more or less says, uh, they pulled a fast one on me. And that is not a particularly good line of argument, is it? <laughs> not if you're yeah. also a banker. Uh, you're, exactly. You know, he's supposedly been employed for his expertise. He's been put into the House of Lords. No confirmatory hearing. He's been given an absolutely crucial position in dealing with the slump. And he's reduced, and the best, the he's best reduced he can say to bleating, is saying, they didn't tell me. These clever people fooled me. <laughs> so, you yeah. weren't, I think the answer is, you were not impressed. Not impressed. All right. Uh, but America, Diane, it, it does populism better, oh, is it fantastic. not? I mean, the House of Representatives passing a, 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 an act, we don't know what it's going to become law yet, yeah. but saying that if you're now part of a state owned, largely state-owned yeah. financial institution, and you get a bonus above $250,000, it'll be taxed at 90%. It's fantastic. And you've got the, <laughs> attorney, the New York Attorney General, and, um, Andrew Cuomo, yeah. threatening to, you know, put them in prison. The Americans do it so much better. Well, what you have is diversity of power, whereas in Britain you have a monopoly of power. Yeah. I mean, in the United States, you, you have attorneys general, you have governors... Uh, you have prosecutors, you have Congress, you, you have the Senate. All, all, all of these volition. people have... Yeah. And you have committees, have you have committees with real power. No, it's true. Uh, Mr Obama, um, anxious to show that he shares the anger of the American people. Uh, is there a sense, though, that the honeymoon is already coming to an end for him? Well, although people are very angry with uh, financiers and so on, I'm afraid the opinions and the verdicts of markets matter very much. Mm. And on that basis... The Obama team has not gripped the economy. No. Uh, they Real do problem with his Treasury Secretary, hasn't it? Uh, Tim Geithner. They, yeah. they, they do not enjoy the confidence of the American investing public. And also, public. they've still got lots of vacancies. Yes. They haven't managed to yeah. recruit The British the complaining that they can't get a reply because there's yeah. no one doing the job yeah. yet for the G20. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting. We'll just see if, his Treasury, if he sticks by his young Treasury Secretary or not. Back here in Britain, Diane, uh, Prime Minister's question showed that um, the subdued commons is no more. That's yes, over that's now, isn't but it? But business is back, back, back as usual. In fact, um, Cameron had quite a good joke about miners, just yeah. to say, about Dennis Killing wanted more miners, and he got one, he got Lord Miners. You know, uh, I, 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 I thought it was a very good question time. I thought both of them were on absolutely top mm. form. It was about as good a question time as I can remember with any leader of the opposition and any prime minister. Interesting, you know, Cameron has lots of self-confidence. The Prime Minister is, is absolutely on a high. I mean, lots of people say, oh, you know, Paul Brown is in a terrible mess. But no, he's in another world. He's, he, he's leading the global fight as he sees sure. it. Well, I was reminded of the old Gordon Brown in the, the first term or whatever, when he really dominated the mm. chamber. Mm. And you saw that, I think, this, this, this week. He even did it as a backbencher when he first arrived in the House. Yeah, and then kind really. of fell off as Chancellor, yes. didn't he? Yeah. He seems to have got a bit of that back, and Mr Cameron seems to go from strength to strength too, so it's a gladiatorial yeah. contest. And, and although for reasons that uh, I fail to understand, the Prime Minister 
has not accepted your advice and called an early election. <laughs> <laughs> Prime Minister, if you're looking, I, I'm surprised at you. Not to say dismayed that you would ignore Mr. Patilla's advice. But in effect, the election campaign's begun. Yes. It's begun. Yeah. These exchanges are the election campaign. That's what it's going to be about, isn't it? Yes, although looking at Anita's report, she said um, you know, the opinion polls suggested that if there were the green shoots of recovery between now and the election, Labour in a better position. I mean, the Conservatives can lose the election, and David Cameron said that this week. But I think one thing that the Conservatives don't have to worry about is green shoots of recovery. No. I promise you, between now and May, June 2010, we're in for a really rough time. Well, that, isn't that true, Diane? Because the poll, it postulated, a, it was a hypothesis, which is always dangerous in polling, that if there were some green shoots, how would you then think of the government? And it showed a sense that maybe the government could a little more support. Then we have the IMF report saying that we will decline by more than any other major economy this year, and alone of the major economies will be the one not growing next year. Ipso facto, no green shoots. I think that's right. I don't think the recession's bottomed out, and I think precisely because of we, financial services are so big, we did it so well, that's why we're going to be hit so I mean, hard. it's a tough prospect. Your colleagues must, on the back benches, I mean, it... it must in a way almost keep them awake at night at the prospect of having to fight an election with over three million unemployed. It's not a great prospect. And those, those colleagues that represent places where you've got manufacturing, I mean, every week they're hearing about job losses and closures. And Mr Cameron put a little flesh, I wouldn't, uh, I mean, pretty anorexic flesh on the Tory bone this week, saying that debt was now more important than tax cuts. I mean, I... No, I, I, I think David Cameron's taken quite an important uh, step. Uh, I mean, this is quite different from the last elections where the Tories were going to match the government on public spending all the way. So David Cameron has given Gordon Brown the opportunity to say, look, don't vote for these people, they're going to cut all our public services. And David Cameron, on the other hand, is saying, don't believe the Prime Minister. All these promises of more money, they cannot be delivered because we're in crisis and we're going to have to cut public spending. That's quite a big movement. But there is still something a bit unreal on both sides of Westminster at the moment. There's still arguments about we should be spending more on this, doing more on that. Tories yes. talking about still sticking to their inheritance tax cut and, and all the rest of it. We're paying too much tax and so on. The fact is, whoever wins this election has going to have no money to do it. There isn't any money to spend they're on gonna, They're going to have less than no money. They're going to have to cut public spending to hard. To pay back. Yeah, well, to, to try and put the public finances on some, this, kind of, on some kind of stability. Let me give me one half sentence more. And I think David Cameron is actually showing a certain confidence that he's going to win the election because he believes he has to prepare the public for a very tough time after the election. Sorry. This election could be like 1992, not an election to win. Yes, indeed. We need to see what would have happened if, uh, if Labour had well, won. Well, I enjoyed winning in 92. 92. Uh, it's going to be a grim budget there. I mean, the, the, the figures out now on borrowing. Probably now we're borrowing £90 billion in this financial year. It looks like it could be up to £150 billion in 2010-11. And maybe, if the IMF is right, another £150 billion. But These the, are but the Prime Minister amazing is, figures. The Prime Minister is still, clear, is still clearly of the view that between now and the election, he doesn't need to confront the reality of our situation. He's still making us believe that if we simply increase public spending enough, we will alleviate the problem. If you take the position, as, as the Conservatives have, that debt reduction will come before tax cuts, and if you take these figures I've just read out, is it not fair to assume in a first Conservative term there would be no tax cuts? The, the scale of the public deficit problem that has to be dealt with is colossal. And I would have thought in Either government, you're going to be looking at tax rises. There we go. You heard it here first, Diane. Go and put a, a wee bet with the bookies, because <laughs> Mr. Patilla said it. Now, we've got no time for snobbery or discrimination or elitism here on This 